This is the penultimate part of refurbishing a vintage model steamboat and it is part number 30, heading for completion of the project. There's still quite a bit to do really, but I'm going to condense it. I'm not going to show fitting the stern handrails, because this is not something I can film, because I really will be too busy actually doing it and making it work. What I'm doing at the moment is mixing some paint. I needed a colour that I couldn't readily find on a colour chart of a Humbrol product. I think probably the shade of the original paint has changed with age so it was quicker to use some old tins of Humbrol and mix my own colour. The small tin with the word mix written on it was for the outer edge, for the piece of brass that goes all the way round the boat, and I got a very good colour match with that. In the end I also think I got a good colour match with the red primer type colour that's on the inside edge of the top of the deck, as well as around the stern area of the boat. I've also now finalised the way I'm going to mount the radio control. It's all going to sit inside this little box that sits on the stern decking. The problem is, this little box was a bit weak, and when I pressed on the Velcro to hold the radio control system, a hairline crack appeared, and as you can see, I'm repairing that currently. What I did do in the end, though, was remove all the paint from this component, and then reinforce the wood with cyanoacrylate adhesive, which was then rubbed down and painted. The reason for this is that this deck fitting originally just sat on the deck but now it's going to be handled to get to the switch to switch it on and to remove the receiver if you want to lift off the top decking for any reason. So looking at the job long term I think it's wise to strengthen this component because with the handling it could easily be damaged and the whole thing now is a lot stronger. I'm now about to remove the top decking because I need to get inside the boat again. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the wires out of the way because I do not want to trap these in anything and I've just made this. This is the same arrangement as the one that holds the servos but smaller. This is going to hold the battery. It traps between the two cross members and then is bolted to the boat as shown here. These are stainless steel countersunk Allen head bolts. I don't need to paint these bolts because the holes into which they fit are very deeply countersunk plus the stern decking covers the bolts entirely. Once the battery mount is in position, it's time to mount the battery. Now I could just push it into the side like this, but that's not a good idea. If it vibrated loose, then it would just rattle around the prop shaft. So I'm going to use some Velcro, in exactly the same way as I'm using Velcro to hold the receiver into the small box on the decking. Plus the battery can be tucked under the side as well. Now it's time to make sure that the decking fits, and it fits fine. So I'll remove the decking and then plug in the switch harness and then plug the output from the switch into the receiver. This is just to check that there is full electrical continuity. All of the electrical connections will also be physically held in place with some insulation tape and as you can see the little receiver is lighting up so everything's okay. When doing a job like this it's very important to check things as you go because you do not want to wait until you're in the middle of the lake before a connection fails. Having a quick look at the two boat stand mountings, you can see that one is an original and the other one which I've just put on one side was a replacement. This original appears to be made out of oak, so I used it as a template to cut one out of mahogany. And I also shaped the top so it accurately fitted the curvature of the hull. The reason for making one out of mahogany and not using the original was because the piece of oak was a little bit too thick and my mahogany is a little thinner. So I cut two of these out of pieces of mahogany, and now I have a match pair. I'm also going to make a second boat stand using plywood, and this will have the two uprights as you see here, plus a board which the whole thing will sit on, and this can be used when sailing the boat. These are for ornamental purposes only, and they will look very ornamental when they've been varnished. Apart from the rear handrail job, which is not going to be fun, the last part I needed to make was an extension handle for the water pump. This is made from a piece of thick gauge stainless steel and it took quite a lot of pressure to flatten part of it in the vise. This simple hand pump lever is a very essential accessory. Not only does it make it easier to pump the water into the boiler from a leverage point of view, it stops you from colliding with the pressure gauge and also stops any risk of slicing your finger on the edge of the decking. 
The final episode, which is the next one, will feature a full steam test of the boat. The boat in steam on the bench. Any sailing will not take place till the nice weather happens next year. Following the next episode, it's back to normal, renovating steam engines. The first one will be a Stuart Twin Victoria, followed immediately and possibly at the same time by a Stuart 5A. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.